<sighs> Hello everyone, I'm Ilya Laparev and welcome back to another cello technique tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're gonna work on the rhythm. And with that, we're gonna use study number 26 by the great cello method by Feyar, which is called Studies of the Young Cellist. In this study, I'm gonna give you a few main points on which you need to pay attention. Before we're gonna dive right into the study, if you are new on this channel, well, welcome again. I'm Ilya Laprov, cellist. I produce on this channel cello technique tutorials, other kind of tutorials. I give sometimes cello tips and tricks, and time by time I post a high quality music video. If this is what you want or you are looking for, then consider to subscribe. Well, with that said, let's not wait any longer and let's go right into the exercise. See you in a bit. Cool, we just did the whole exercise, but I'm gonna give you quickly a few points that you need to really pay attention on it. Let's start with the first thing. The most important thing is what is this exercise about? So let's check on the title, up the etude. So we see, of course, number 26, Allegro, but this, what is written up the Allegro? Rhythmical study. And in other words, that means it's a study for the rhythm. So here it's very important that you are extremely precise in your rhythm. Some people, they feel it from the inside. So they count inside themselves and they have a very accurate rhythm inside themselves. Others not. Not everybody is equal. Everybody is different. But for those that have difficulty to maintain the rhythm inside you, there is this great thing called metronome. Of course, metronome is not fun to practice because when we practice too much with metronome, at least that is my opinion, when we practice it too much with metronome and then we start to play the repertoire, we start to play it quite stupidly, so quite a metronome, like everything seems like, yes, it's in rhythm, it's in tempo, it's fine, but it's musically sounding like because it just sounds boring, it sounds metronomically. But your metronome, in this case, is your best friend. If you don't have any metronome at home, no problem. Nowadays, everything is digitalized, so you can download the app called Soundcorsa. This is the app that I'm using on my cell phone, on my iPhone. You can download that for free on the App Store, or you can find it on Google Play Store, which is for Android and so on. Links in the video description below. And talking about links in the video description below, if you don't have the book of the Studies of the Young Chalice by Feyar, again, click on the link that is provided for you. You can download it and use it for free. So, okay, we are talking about rhythm and we are talking about punctuality in the rhythm. Now, let me show you two examples. One rhythmically and another less rhythmically. I'm not going to say the order which one is right, which one is wrong. That's up to you. So, shall we go with the two examples? <laughs> Mm. 
you probably heard the difference. Of course, I always exaggerate when I'm showing the examples. Nobody plays like that, of course. I'm just exaggerating so that you really can hear the difference. So I'm gonna spoil you, guys. The first version was the correct one. Why is that? So please, now I ask you, take the score with you, look at it, look at the first bar, what I played. So here we see, bum, 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 right? This is the first measure. So what do we see here? We see a quarter note with a dot next to it. So that is equal to one, one, two, three, pa, pam, pam, pam. So this is the thing, this one, two, three. So many people, when they play it, they don't play until the end. So they stop halfway. What do I mean with that? This. One, two, but where's the three? We need the three. One, two, three. And then we go, pam, one, two, three, ta, 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 ta. So actually this exercise is only about that. Of course, not about this one, two, three thing, but it's just a point that I wanna give you to be this very strict. So count until the end. Don't go earlier and also don't drag it too long. So remember, pam, one, two, three, pam, 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 pam. Pum, one, two, three, pum, 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 one, two, three, pa, 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 pa. Okay, I just sung for you the four or five measures, but the rest, it's up to you. So analyze it. Where we have the thing, I mean, it's easy to analyze because the whole thing is the same. It's the notes just change. So pay attention to that. Speak the note until the end. Then afterwards, when you found out all these things and when you're doing this with metronome, then I suggest to you, take out the metronome and do it by yourself. Because at the end, when you're gonna play a concert, you're not going to put a metronome next to it and just annoy your colleagues or the public with tick, tack, tick, tack, it's just to get mad, right? Okay, now that we spoke about the most important part of this exercise, which is the rhythm and practicing with metronome and feeling that accuracy inside you, good. Now, the next one, the next thing that I wanna tell you, which is very important, is for the right hand, and here, of course, is about bow distribution. Exactly, bow distribution. I'm gonna explain you why, but before that, before we go with uh, bow distribution, there are some letters and some markings on the score, right? So, first of all, if you have the score with you, I suppose you're watching the score together with me, in the first measure, so, pa, 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 pa. what do we see there? First of all, we see a G, the letter G, right? Then we see the letter SP, sp, or whatever, it's like spitting. Then again, we see a letter G, G, then FR, G, and so on. So, what means letter G? If you guys have watched my other tutorials, you know what it means. If you're new here, well, no problem. I'm gonna explain it again. Actually, in all the videos, I'm gonna explain what that means because every time there is a newcomer here, which I welcome you, but G means Ganserbogen. Ganserbogen? That's German. Ganserbogen means the whole length of the bow, correct? Then we see after that SP, Spitz. So SP comes from Spitz, which is again German for top of the bow. So we stay beautifully and organized over here. Then again, we see a G, Ganser Borg, and then we are on the second measure, Ganser Borg. And, and now in that part here, we see FR, Frosch. So FR comes from Frosch, which is the nut, or I don't know, in other English would be in the beginning of the bow, at the frog, beginning, at any rate, it doesn't matter, but at the frog. But here is where I got confused because I see this exercise, I was playing it through, I was practicing in at it, and for me, it makes not much sense to do a frosh in the second bar. I don't know, maybe it's a misprint, maybe it's not what Fayar wanted, and anyway, the publisher, he wrote FR. For me, it makes not much sense. So I would say, take out that FR and put SP instead, okay? Please forgive me. If I'm wrong, please forgive me. I'm not perfect, no one is perfect. We all can make mistakes. I'm a human being just like you. So check it out what I mean. And maybe, I don't know, hopefully you'll all agree with me why it doesn't make sense. So let's start, let's start from the beginning. So we have the forte, Ganserbogen, G, right? 
Spitznau, SP, ganze Bogenau. Right, so this was the first measure. Now the second measure, G, uh, G, ganze Bogen, whole length of the bow. And then FR, Frosch, which means the beginning of the bow, but we're not at the beginning of the bow, we are at the tip of the bow or the top of the bow. Right, this is strange. So let me play as it's written here, okay? So there we go again from the beginning. Now, this is I don't understand. How can you use Ganze Bogen and then jump back to the uh, to the frog of the bow, to the beginning of the bow? This is I don't get. So, if you feel that I am right, then take out that FR, that Frosch, and put SP instead, okay? Next musical term that we see here, in the third bar, we see it's written simile. What does mean simile? Simile means the same over and over again. So simile means the rest of the exercise would be the same kind of bowing, okay? Cool, so now that we know which letter means what, now let's go back to bow distribution. So bow distribution, in the beginning, you're gonna have hints from the publisher. So he wrote G, S, P, G, 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 and the letters. You know it already what it means. So this is good. So G means whole length of the bow, ganzer bogen. So really do that. Don't disrespect, do it. So we start more or less the first note. I would say maybe start more or less a little bit more than the middle of the bow, if you can see, right? So don't start really over here. Start more over here because it's forte, loud, no, sorry, shit, now I am the one who made the mistake. Not loud, strong. See? So, because if you start over here, you don't have enough space. You don't have enough limit. Uh, you're limited, you see? And when you're limited, then you're gonna start to, to use your reserve. And what is your reverse force? And then this happens. I painful for the ears, right? So that's why we want to start a little bit more over here. Not only in this exercise, but in general, right? So plan very good your bow using. So we start from here and then we go straight to the first bar. Ganze Bogen. So really go until here. Spitz now. Right? So now that we are in the Spitz, I want to say one thing. I don't want to hear this. No, I don't want jelly. I want crisp and clear and short notes. Cool. And the last thing that I want to mention here in this exercise, a very important thing is left hand anticipation. This is extremely, extremely, extremely important. What does left hand and spatial mean. So let me return to the beginning of the exercise and let me play you the first measure showing you what is left hand anticipation. There we go. Did you find it? Did you find it? Where is the left hand anticipation? One more time. Slower. Now I think you found where is the left hand anticipation. So it's this one. So what means left hand anticipation? Left hand anticipation means that your left hand has to prepare in advance. So your left hand has to react faster than your right hand. So it has to be on place before you hit the note. So let me show you this. See, it's already in position. I even didn't touch a note. And now we go there. Because what happens if we don't have a good left hand anticipation? Let me show you an example. See, did you hear? It's just not accurate. It sounds, yeah, it just sounds out of tune. And yeah, the chances that you're gonna screw up are huge. So that's why I would suggest you for the whole exercise, find out where are these passages, the same patterns. So where you have the same note, but you change finger. Okay, so this is in the first measure. Now let's go to the second measure, which is, uh, yes, second finger. Right, now we continue to the third measure. 
So I want you to do that for the whole exercise. I just gave you the three uh, first measures, but the rest is up to you. So one more time. So you see the reaction has to be quite quickly. You cannot be lazy here. You cannot do the... You cannot be lazy. No, it's all about activity. So... Right, one more time. Sorry, out of tune. Happens. So see, every time I was playing this uh, passage here, you notice that my left hand was first. He was first, then my right hand. So do that, please. This is very important because or else you can really screw up this exercise. So I don't have anything else to add here in this exercise. But if by any chance you have any suggestions or tips or even tricks, well, let us know in the comment section below because like this, you help others. And this is this channel all about. We all love to help others here. So with that said, I want to close for today's lesson. It's time for me to go to bed. I'm still with the jet lag, feeling a little bit sleepy. So I'll see you next time with study number 27 by Louis Fiar, Studies of the Young Cellist. And if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Please hit the subscribe button. This is a great support for me. Be part of our community so we can learn to play the cello better. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.